after studying this module you shall be able to know the planning commission's approach of project appraisal to identify the categories of project learn the methodology adopted by pad learn the functions of bpe pad and pip know the stages in appraisal process for public investment social cost benefit analysis is conducted to substantiate the feasibility of a project especially in the public sector and thereby facilitating the government in its investment decisions a country like india where increased public sector investment is one of the biggest growth drivers on the one hand and affordability constraints in terms of limited resources on the other importance of project appraisal analysis cannot be undermined this module provides an overview of such appraisal techniques adopted by government of india now let us come to the problems in adopting scba in public enterprises although with the establishment of bureau of public enterprises that is bpe in 1965 and subsequent issue of comprehensive guidelines the coordination and evaluation of project was strengthened but still there was a problem of delay in selection and implementation of projects the reasons attributed are number 1 uncertainty of flow from project it is difficult to estimate the benefits and flows from the public enterprises in a precise manner the effects of the projects are sometimes not clearly visible and in some cases there are difficulties in converting them into monetary terms the effects appear at a very later stage in time therefore it is difficult to figure out how long one should wait to incorporate those effects number 2 expectation of society the expectation of the society regarding the benefits changes from time to time moreover it differs from one class of society to another form of society number 3 government policy on pricing the government fixes relatively lower prices for output of these projects obviously due to social reasons this section relates to granting economic benefits in different direct form however if we measure economic benefits in this direct form they will be very low the actual real benefits may be much higher number 4 difficulty in cost analysis the benefits evaluation compares the benefits with the related cost but in case of public enterprises it is very difficult to calculate the cost using costing techniques due to various problems like low input cost policy difficulty in cost allocation complications in accounting practices etc number 5 computation of cost of capital the cost of capital plays an important role in project analysis in case of private enterprises internal return on capital employed and average cost of capital may be easily computed but in public sector it cannot be applied easily as it is very difficult to calculate the cost of capital to the government the planning commission now the niti ayog has a great role to play in this regard now let us discuss about the steps taken by government of india to improve public investment decisions usually foreign aids and external assistance are received by developing countries like india but for proper utilization well conceived projects should be ready for immediate implementation it is clear that there is a need for preparing feasibility studies recognizing the importance the government of india has taken various steps to improve the quality of project planning and strengthening the public investment decision making process the following steps have been taken over number 1 the bureau of public enterprises in 1965 an autonomous organization was set up by the government of india under the ministry of finance to supervise and regulate all respects of public sector projects the objective was to integrate and strengthening the arrangement for projects and the working of public enterprises in india number 2 issue of manual 
This manual has been released by the Planning Commission in 1965 itself outlining the details of the procedure to be adopted for project evaluation. Number three, project appraisal division. In 1972, the Government of India set up a special division, public appraisal division in the Planning Commission. It may be noted that as to fulfill the basic objective of its creation, the PAD has prepared and circulated the guidelines for the preparation of feasibility reports for industrial projects. In 1994, on 6 January, the PAD was reconstituted as Project Appraisal and Management Division that is PAMD. Number 4, Public Investment Board. In 1972, the Government of India set up a high-powered Public Investment Board with a view to evolve the scientific procedure for taking investment decision. The appraisal of small projects are undertaken by the Expenditure Finance Committee and the Ministry of Finance. But if there is involvement of an outlay of more than rupees 5 crore, then Public Investment Board does the appraisal and recommendation. It is applicable to all central government projects but other than departmental undertakings. Now coming to the Public Investment Board. Bureau of Public Enterprises that is BPE in 1965 and subsequent issue of comprehensive guidelines the coordination and evaluation of project was strengthened. Considering that there were still problems related to delay in selection and implementation of the projects, in 1972, the Government of India set up a high-powered public investment board with a view to evolve scientific procedure for taking investment decision. The projects undertaken by PIB. The appraisal of small projects are undertaken by the Expenditure Finance Committee and the Ministry of Finance. But if there is involvement of an outlay of more than rupees 5 crores, then Public Investment Board does the appraisal and recommendation. It is applicable to all central government projects but other than departmental undertakings. The functions of PIB. Following functions have been assigned to PIB. Number one, examination of the board contours of investment proposals in the project formulation stage based on which a decision to prepare the feasibility report should be taken. Number two, taking investment decisions on proposals for public investment to produce goods and services. And number three, consideration of proposals for revision of cost estimates which exceed those approved at the time of investment decisions. Criteria adopted by PIB. The PIB follows the following criteria. Conformity of the project with planned priorities for allocation of funds. Advisability of undertaking the project in the public sector or joint sector. Adequacy of financial internal rate of return as well as economic internal rate of return. Contribution of the project to foreign exchange earnings. Availability of plan funds and convenience of budgetary allocations. Adequacy of safety and anticipation measures. Soundness of marketing strategy. Assistance to PIB. The appraisal work by PIB is assisted by various agencies which are Plan Finance Division, Bureau of Public Enterprises, Project Appraisal Division and the Financial Advisor. The assistance by Plan Finance Division comes under the Ministry of Finance and the mode of assistance is that it examines the proposals with reference to the budgeting and plan allocations. Bureau of Public Enterprises is an autonomous organization under Ministry of Finance. It examines construction cost, capital structure and other technical and financial aspects. Then the project appraisal division is a special division in planning commission. It renders assistance in CBA. The financial advisor is a sponsoring ministry. It furnishes a feasibility study and provides all information needed by PIP. Now coming to Public Appraisal Management Division that is PAMD. 
there is always a need to appraise the central sector projects from the point of view of national importance and in particular the projects whose cost exceed the certain limits. They need to be economically observed. In order to fulfill the objectives in 1972, the Government of India set up a special division, Public Appraisal Division, in the erstwhile Planning Commission, now the Niti Ayog. In 1994, on 6 January, the PAD was reconstituted as Project Appraisal and Management Division, that is PAMD. The appraisal by a PAMD broadly includes the following about the projects or schemes the need and justification for the project scheme, linkages with the plan, demand supply gap and development, technical feasibility, organizational, managerial and financial capabilities of project authorities, the reliability of cost estimates, financial and economic viability etc. of projects and schemes. Functions of erstwhile PAT. The following functions have been assigned to PAT. Number one, to suggest standard formats for submission of projects, to prescribe procedures for techno-economic evaluation of projects and also to conduct actual techno-economic evaluation of selected major projects, to standardized formats and procedures for project evaluation so as to assist state and central government, to undertake and support research regarding project evaluation. Functions of PAMD Number 1. Appraisal The subject divisions of Niti Ayog provide consultations to PAMD in appraisal of public funded plan projects and schemes. It is important to note that the recommendation or decision by the Public Investment Board that is PIB or Expenditure Finance Committee or EFC is made only after appraisal by PAMD. It depends upon the nature of the project and project cost. On 29th August 2014, the Department of Expenditure and Ministry of Finance has raised the sanction limit with effect from 29th August 2014 wide OM number 2435PF2 2012 dated 29th August 2014. Appraisal the proposals for revised cost estimates are also appraised by this division. There is a standing committee on time and cost overrun as constituted by the ministries or the departments. In this regard, the officers of PAMD represent the planning commission in this standing committee. The approval. The PAMD also acts as consulting division. It also offers comments on proposals of in principle approval of new schemes and projects. Coverage of appraisal note of PAD. The appraisal note of PAD covers the following. Number one, related with cost, that is capital cost, operating cost, the possibilities of cost minimization, possible alternatives and the least cost options. Number two, related with the project, the project description and the background of the proposal, plan of the project, justification of the project and the project life. Number three, related with product. Analysis of demand and the market, the technological aspects along with proposed capacity, gestation period, capacity utilization, production buildup, product mix, infrastructure requirements and availability. Number four, related with viability. The financial analysis, sensitivity analysis, and the social profitability analysis. Now coming to the planning commission guidelines. Any public investment project involves the project formulation stage, appraisal stage and finally the sanction stage. In between project formulation and appraisal there is a need for feasibility report. It may be noted that in identification of investment options under project formulation stage there is involvement of the administrative ministry planning commission and other concerned authorities. The feasibility report lies in between the project formulation stage and the appraisal and sanction stage. The project formulation stage involves the identification of investment options by the entrepreneur in consultation with the administrative ministry. 
the planning commission and the concerned authorities. In order to process investment proposals and arrive at investment decisions, the planning commission has issued guidelines for preparing, formulating industrial projects. These guidelines provide a good account of almost all the points necessary to appraise a public investment project. These guidelines have been revised in January 1975 and published by a PAD of Planning Commission. The guidelines have been summarized as follows. Number one, the journal information. The journal information about the project primarily includes an analysis of the industry to which the proposed project belongs. The feasibility report should contain the information about the enterprise also. It includes the following. It should deal with the past performance of the industry, the decision of the type of the industry, the priority of the industry, increase in production, role of public sector, allocation of investment funds and the choice of techniques. Number two, the preliminary analysis of alternatives. The preliminary analysis include the location of the project and its implications. In fact, all those options should be considered in this stage which is technically feasible. It is obvious that if there is technical infeasibility, the project cannot be undertaken. This preliminary analysis, part of the feasibility study contains the following. An account of foreign exchange requirement, the present data on gap between demand and supply for the outputs, a list of proposed projects, a complete list of all existing plants in the industry, the capacity and level of production actually attained of existing plants, a list of all projects for which letters of intent licenses have been issued, an account of the foreign exchange requirement, the profitability of different options, the data on the capacity that would be available from projects. Number three, project description. The feasibility report should provide description about the project also. It includes the following. A brief description of the technology and process chosen for the project. The information for optimality of the location. The environmental effects on population, water, land, air, etc. The other environmental disruption. A list of important items of capital equipment and operation requirements of water and power, personnel, transport cost, activity wise phasing of construction and factors affecting it. Number four, the marketing plan. It includes the following, the data on the marketing plan, demand and prospective supply, the methods and the data used for making estimates of domestic supply, estimates of degree of price sensitivity should be presented, it should contain an analysis of past trends in prices. Number five, capital requirements and cost. The feasibility report should contain the estimates of capital requirements. It should be complete and adequately estimated. The requirement should be based on all components of capital cost. Number six, operating requirements and costs. There are some costs which are incurred after the commencement of commercial production. These costs are related with cost of raw materials and intermediaries, fuel, utilities, labor repair and maintenance, selling expenses, etc. Number seven, financial analysis. Any project should also be financially viable. The project data is represented in the form of memorandum or performer balance sheet which is definitely based upon projected or estimated figures. The Bureau of Public Enterprises has prescribed the rates of depreciation in this relation. They must be adhered to while preparing performer balance sheet. There should be proper clearances from the various departments like Department of Economic Affairs in respect of any foreign exchange requirements. Any income tax rebates for backward areas, priority industries, etc. should be considered while preparing the feasibility report. 
Number 8, economic analysis. The data relating to cost and return of the project requires to be adjusted in relation to social profitability analysis. The following are the basic adjustments. A correction in input and cost, reflection of effect of foreign exchange, the effect of employment of labor and optimum utilization of capital and the impact of its operations on foreign exchange. Now coming to the steps in appraisal process adopted by planning commission. The project appraisal passes through following three stages. Number one, project formulation. Number two, feasibility study. And number three, detailed project report. The investment proposal in the first two stages are handled by a public investment board in order to arrive at a decision. The examination and clearance of detailed project report are referred by financial advisors in consultation with concerned administrative ministries. It may result into revision in cost estimates. Due to this revision, the difference arises as regards the amount approved by the stage of investment decision by PIP. It is important to note that if the revised cost estimates exceeds by more than 20% of the amount approved, then the matter is again referred to the board. Stage 1. First of all, the priority and position of the investment proposal in the context of 5-year or annual plan is considered at preliminary and broad level. Then, the smooth functioning of this process requires close association of administrative machinery with the planning commission because formulation stage should necessarily be considered before the preparation of plans. If foreign exchange implications of the projects are serious, then the Department of Economic Affairs is also consulted. Thereafter, a feasibility report is prepared considering the views of concerned agencies, administrative ministry, public investment board, plan finance of planning commission, project approval wing of planning commission, the feasibility report is prepared if the board directs so. Stage 2. This stage is concerned with feasibility study. In first stage, feasibility report is prepared on direction of public investment board. The administrative ministry marks comments on the feasibility report prepared under stage 1. The multiple copies of the report are made and these are sent to the concerned financial advisor in the department concerned. The financial advisor forwards these copies of feasibility report to the following agencies. Plan finance and project appraisal wing in department of expenditure. Bureau of Public Enterprises, Department of Economic Affairs, Planning Commission, any other agency deemed necessary. Then the comments to be made by above agencies consider various important issues like advisability of plan funds, desirability of diversion of plan funds to new projects from those already on hand, the economic benefits of the project as distinct from financial returns, the advisability of undertaking the project in the public sector or joint sector or private sector, project's contribution to the social and economic objectives of the country, the plant capacity and investment timing in the light of demand and supply balance including export possibilities, Crucial assumptions in feasibility report which are likely to affect the performance of the commission project in relation to the claims made thereon in the feasibility report. Stage 3. The comments are received by financial advisor from all concerned agencies as listed above. A report is also prepared by financial advisor incorporating these comments. This report is forwarded to Plan, Finance and Project Approval Wing that is PFAP in Department of Expenditure. The PFAP prepares a final report 
after due consideration of essential points and notes obtained from different agencies. This final report is to be examined by PIB as regards the financial and economic characteristics of proposed investment. The final decision is taken by the board. The board may decide to go ahead with the proposed investment or to drop it or to modify it. Now coming to the World Bank approach. The approach followed by World Bank is similar to the methodology used by Planning Commission. The templates and guidelines are available for the project appraisal document that is PAD. These guidelines consist of the following sections. The rationale, objectives and key features. Guidelines on processing the PAD. Table of contents of the project appraisal document that is PAD. Guidelines for the contents and structure of the PAD main text and technical annex. Appendix 1, template for the PAD cover sheet. Annex 2, guidelines for the critical risks matrix. Appendix 3, illustrative readiness criteria. Now let us summarize what we have learnt from this module. Public sector in India is considered to be the principal supplier of social services impacting the society and economy as a whole. It thus becomes imperative to conduct conscientious pre-assessment and appraisal of mega projects which they undertake. Social cost benefit analysis is applied to evaluate such public policies and projects in order to support planning and project selection. In view of existing problems regarding the adoption of SCBA by public enterprises, Government of India has undertaken pertinent steps, especially the guidelines and appraisal process provided by erstwhile Planning Commission, now the Niti Aayog, to improve the quality of project planning and strengthening the public investment decision making process and help evolve standardized procedure for taking investment decisions.